So in this video we're going to introduce the idea of traveling waves and we'll connect the traveling waves to the simple harmonic motion from the the previous topic. Uh, the idea of a, of a traveling wave is that when you have a material and the material in this case will always be referred to as the medium that material might be a string or it might be water, it could be air, it could be a slinky or a spring. If any material that you have is disturbed that disturbance will begin to travel down the the medium. It will travel along any path that it can along the the medium. So a wave is a very intangible thing. It's it's not the medium. It's not the string. It's not the slinky or the spring. It's not the water. Those are the medium. But that's not the wave. The wave is the disturbance of the medium. So that's like a little bit of an intangible thing to to think about because it's not something physical like the way the string or the slinky or the or the water those are very physical they're made of atoms but the disturbance is not the atoms themselves but it's the way that those atoms are behaving so when they become disturbed the disturbance begins to travel through the medium and as a result it does two things first of all it transfers energy and momentum so in order for the disturbance to exist in the first place obviously energy has to be put in something has to disturb the medium and as a result it puts energy into the system that the system then transfer the medium transfers the energy and the momentum from one end to the other without the net motion of the medium so when you think about the definition of a wave there are sort of three parts to it the three parts are that the medium is disturbed that the wave transfers energy and momentum and then lastly there is no net motion of the medium after the wave has passed through the medium is going to be right back exactly where it was and it will be as though nothing had ever happened so this is how you define the wave and this is something that we'll, we'll continue to talk about um, throughout the the series of lectures and in class to further reinforce what it means to to be this like very intangible idea of a of a wave before we go into all the different types of waves and some of the, the um, problems that we're going to solve, let's first of all just examine what causes the disturbance to move in the first place. So in order to do that, I'm going to use as an example a just a simple piece of string. So we'll take a string and we'll tie it to some object over here at the end. and I am going to hold on to this end over here so on this end over here I can move the string up and down and as a result that will disturb it so this is the equilibrium position for the string this is where it would naturally want to be if it was left alone all the forces are balanced and so the net force is zero at this point point. and what I'm going to do is I'm going to disturb the string and I'm going to do it by moving the string up and then I'll pull the string back down I'll pull it up by a certain distance and I'll pull it right back to its original equilibrium position so I'm going to apply a force here. In all these diagrams, I'll be drawing forces, and I'll always draw them as arrows, but they won't be labeled. This is the only time I'm going to label it. I want to keep the diagrams clean and easy to, to understand. So anytime you see an arrow, though, that arrow, unless it's labeled otherwise, that label represents a force. So as I pull up on the medium, as I pull up on the medium by applying that force, this portion of the medium, this guy right here, as I pulled up on him, he applied a force to the guy next to him. But there's a little bit of a lag. So when I apply a force to this guy, he begins to move up. And as a result of him moving up, now, and only when he starts to move upward, as soon as he moves up out of the equilibrium position, then he starts to exert a force on the guy next to him. And the farther that I pull him up, the greater the force that he can exert. So the force becomes less and less as I move down the line because these guys have not moved up as much. That is to say that this guy is slightly moved from the equilibrium position, so he exerts a small force on this guy. But this guy up here, he's quite a ways from the equilibrium position, so he is exerting quite a strong force on the piece of the medium that is next to him. So I exerted the force on this portion of the medium. That force was transferred to this guy as soon as he started to move. Once he began to move, and was now above the equilibrium position, his position caused him to exert a force on the guy next to him, and subsequently on the guy next to him and next to him. And this is the way that the disturbance is going to travel through the medium. Only once the medium begins to move out of its equilibrium position does it then begin to exert a force on the guy next to him. So I said that I would move this up, and then I would pull this thing back down. 
Let me slide this up just a little bit. So now I'm going to pull this back down. And as I pull back down, in the time while I'm pulling this back down, of course, the forces over here are continuing to exert force on the people to the right of them. As they exert that force on them, they begin to accelerate. They start from rest, so initially they don't move too fast. But as the force is applied for a longer period of time, this guy will feel the force for a long period of time. And as he feels that force, he begins to accelerate, and so he begins to pick up speed. He travels faster and faster. But of course, initially, he travels very, very slowly. So as he begins to be pulled up, and is now at this position, so this portion of the medium is now here at the top of this hill, then this hill up here is pulling up on all of the people to the right of them, or all the portions of the medium which are to the right are being pulled up, and everybody over here on the left is being pulled down. As soon as I started pulling down on the medium on this side, as soon as I began to pull down on the medium on this side, then that began to exert a downward force. But remember, this guy was up here before. So he was actually traveling in the upward direction when I started to pull down on it. So he's not going to immediately move down. What he's first going to do is slow to a stop. He's going to slow to a, a stop when he reaches the highest position that I originally had pulled it to. He'll go up to that position and he'll come to a stop. And then, because the force is being exerted in the downward direction on him, then he will begin to start moving down. But he doesn't instantly begin to move down. This is why he's always a little bit behind the guy in front. So when this guy started to get pulled down, then he slowed to a stop, and after he came to a complete stop, then began to move in the downward direction. So as soon as I started to pull down, he experienced the downward force, but he didn't instantly move down. There was a little lag, there was a little bit of a, of a delay. And that delay, how long that delay is, depends a lot on the medium. And it would depend on things like how dense the medium is, how thick the string is, how much tension there is, is one of the main uh, factors that affects how quickly this guy can respond. The greater the tension, the faster he'll be able to respond. The quicker he'll slow to a stop, and the quicker he'll be able to start moving down in the direction of the guy who was to his left. So this is what the, the disturbance looks like. And now I'm going to stop. I'm not going to move it. I pulled up, I pulled down. Now I'm not going to do anything anymore. And what's going to happen is the disturbance is going to continue to travel. And the picture is going to look basically identical from here on out. Okay, so from here on out, the picture will look basically the same. These guys who are being pulled up, they're being pulled up because just before this moment, there were forces to their left that were pulling them, that were pulling those portions of the medium. This portion of the medium was right here, being pulled up. It rose up to its highest position, and as it rose up, it pulled on everybody that was over to the right of them. So all these guys here, all this portion of the medium right here, that was previously undisturbed, now they're beginning to be disturbed. And, of course, as the medium reaches its maximum height, then the medium begins to get pulled back down. And so as the medium begins to get pulled back down, as this portion begins to get pulled back down, it pulls everybody to his right back down. Eventually, these guys being pulled down will stop these guys from moving up, and then they'll begin to move down also. And so this is how the wave is going to continue to travel. And in this case, the wave's traveling to the right. So the wave looks basically the same from here on out. I do want to draw one more version of this. Put him a little bit further down the line. So in this case, our wave is traveling to the right. The velocity of the wave is traveling to the right. But if you look back over here at the original medium where I started the whole wave, the whole wave started on the, on the left side over here, there is no, there is net, no net motion. The medium is exactly in the place where it was before the wave traveled through it. And so this is an important aspect of wave motion is that the, the medium cannot go anywhere. The medium has to stay where it is. And what travels is not the medium, but the disturbance of the medium. That is what's going to travel to the right. And of course, you can think of this sort of as potential energy. There's tension in here. It's like elastic energy. 
I pulled up this portion, just like if I stretched out a rubber band, this is extra stretched, and so there's energy stored in there. And that energy is gonna move down the line. It's trapped in the disturbance. It will move down the line to the right, and it can transfer not only energy, but also momentum. You can imagine if I put like a soda can right here. As this wave moves through, eventually this string is gonna hit the can, and it's gonna knock the can over. It's gonna transfer energy to the can and give the can kinetic energy, and it's also gonna give the can momentum. And therefore, the crest will probably be a little smaller. It'll lose a little bit of its energy as it transfers some of that energy to the objects that it runs into as it moves down the, the line. Now, we have a, a word that you're gonna hear very commonly with wave motion, and that word is propagate. To propagate means to transfer energy through wave motion, it's a way of describing a particular kind of motion as opposed to, say, just linear motion or translational motion or rotational motion. It's the motion of a disturbance, which is this um, transfer of energy through wave motion. Now, the direction of propagation is the same thing as the direction of the wave's velocity. So when you say that, for example, in this case, the wave propagation is to the right because that's the direction of the wave's velocity. Now what's important about that is that also means that that is the direction that the energy is being transferred. Energy is being transferred to the right and also momentum is being transferred to the right. So the direction of the wave propagation is the direction that the energy and also the momentum, but we'll probably focus a little more on the energy, is the direction in which the energy is being transferred as the disturbance moves through the, through the wave. So this, we'll leave that as this for the introductory video for traveling waves. And in the next video, we'll take a look at different types of waves. How can you produce these different types of disturbances? And what are the names for those types of waves?